What? Ah, you've got to be kidding me. Really? Oh, well, I guess we won't be going outside for a while. Welcome to episode 5 of Merchant Slipped. In the last episode we've had an eventful time where we breached the caverns and had to deal with some of the dangers from the depths below. We fought a giant cave spider and a giant alm, and learned about a tribe of bad people living underground. This in turn forced us to make a hospital and, well sadly also a cemetery. We sealed off the caverns again and are now safe behind our drawbridge. For this episode we have one main objective. Metal. We needed to get our military equipped with armor and weapons. We join our dwarves in the spring of the year 102. Our dwarves are still at work moving some of the new bedrooms, but otherwise we don't have a whole lot to do. So we'll get started on tapping into the volcano and getting a reservoir of magma down into the fortress, so we can power our furnaces and smelters. On this floor we'll look at the point where we'll tap into the volcano. The lava will flow through this little passage into the channels on the left, and then it will fall down one floor into the reservoir below. This is where we'll have our main reservoir of magma. We'll have four points where we can tap into the reservoir, which will seal off with floodgates. One of those floodgates we'll use to drain the reservoir to a second reservoir, under our forges and smelteries. Here you can see the channel will dig to the new reservoir. If everything winds up working, I can just open the tap to fill the main reservoir, and then when that's filled up I can open the second floodgate to fill up this reservoir. And then my smiths and smelters can use that magma to fire the forges that I'll build up here. There. This will be plenty of work for our miners to do. It's our first real project, so I hope everything will work out. With a little luck this will fulfill our smelter needs for quite a while. As we watch our miners going to work on this, we can see a bunch of dwarves having fun in the bulbous berries. It's important for dwarves to feel good in our fortress, so it's great to see them dancing and singing. Here we see the description of the Lady Consort Sesta. She heard the bulbous berries is a place to enjoy oneself, so people are coming from far and wide to visit our great tavern, which is great to see. Looking at the dance our dwarves and visitors are performing, it seems like they are forming multiple lines. Dancers are performing slowly with the music, while occasionally making great leaps. The dance seems quite involved and goes through a lot of themes. The music is intense and sharp edged. I need to get some instruments so that our dwarves and bards can play some actual music to accompany the dances. That'll be epic. Well, don't forget to do some work you guys. Since our dwarves are now done with the main digging, I can start putting in some floodgates. Luckily we found some basalt stone in the fortress, which is a magma safe material. It will never burn up or melt, so Saphir, our manager, has ordered a bunch of floodgates to be made out of basalt. The first two are done, so we'll put them in place in the first channel. These are like a main valve with which we can close off our entire magma supply. In the future I might want to drain the reservoir, so this way we can make sure it won't just keep filling up. Once they're all in place, all I have to do is link them up to levers and we can open and close the floodgates whenever we want. I made a little lever room next to the workshops here where I'll keep all my magma related levers. While our mechanics are busy connecting up the floodgates, Mafal enters the bulbous berries. After a long stint of counting the stocks in his office, he deserves a nice drink. He does this every day, but this time he sees a big group of dwarves standing together listening to a single dwarf. On one of the tables stands Tirist in Gishkor. Tirist is one of the many dwarves that came in the biggest migrant wave we've had so far. He's been drafted into the military and has had a lot of talks with Moral and Urvat about the leadership of the fortress, and right now he's preaching to the dwarves. Mafol joins the group and listens in. Tirist is making a passionate speech that a fortress needs a proper military and needs to put safety first. Tirist starts off by saying, The accident with Ethel is a very clear warning from Alas. Alas is one of the gods and we don't have a temple to him at the moment. It's the god associated with order and law. So he continues, We need order and law here in the fortress. Right now we are working on tapping into the volcano, but that's something we should have been doing from the start. Mafal's a great expedition leader for a trade caravan, but is he the one that we need leading our fortress? The dwarves around Mafal look around and nod amongst themselves. Mafal can't believe his ears and he interrupts. 
What are you talking about? I, I, I never asked to be a mayor to a fortress. But if anyone thinks I'm not doing a good job, then they are free to speak to me about it. Why haven't you guys? Moral? Urfat? Are you really supporting this guy? Well, I, I, I'm sorry Mafal, but we are. You've done a good job so far, but we need a strong and just leader to take us forward. And you're already busy doing all the bookkeeping as well. You hardly have any time left to run the place. Terrorist interrupts before Mafal even has a chance to reply. Nobody here thinks you're doing a horrible job, Mafal, but it's time to have a vote. And I'm stepping forward to be elected. At least until we have a proper military and we don't have any more accidents. Mafal bursts out. You think I wanted the accident with Ethel to happen? Of course I didn't. But the case pilot just burst at him and started fighting us. What would you have me do in a situation like that? Well, you should have known as soon as we started mining that we'd uncover the dangers down below. Who knows what else we'll encounter? We already know of Stazang, the forgotten beast, whose howls we can occasionally hear coming from the depths below. We need to get ready now. And we need a strong leader to take us there. And I am that leader. The dwarf start applauding the heartfelt speech that Tyrus made. He jumps down from the table and starts making his way to the exit, shaking hands with dwarfs on the way. When he passes Mafal, he says, Well, no hard feelings, Mafal, but tomorrow we'll have a vote. I promise I'll let you keep your office and bedroom, but if it's up to me, you'll just be bookkeeper from now on. Everybody starts leaving the bulbous berries, and Mafal just sits down at one of the tables. Raal, the tavern keeper, pours him a mug of dwarven wine. <sighs> it's, it's almost night, and tomorrow they'll have a vote. I'll, I'll never even have time to give a speech. There were at least... 30 dwarfs standing there, and if they all vote for Tyrus, I'll be voted out. Ah, uh, well, my fall won't be sleeping well tonight. The next day, all dwarfs are called into the bulbous berries one by one to cast a vote over who they want to be their leader. Ral, the tavern keeper, counts the votes. At the end of the day, all the dwarfs come together in the tavern to find out about the results. Ral announces. <coughs> The leader of Merchant Slip from now on, with 43 of 50 votes, is Tirist Ingoskor. The dwarves applaud loudly and congratulate Tirist. Sazir, the fortress manager, walks over to Mafal. Hey, if it makes you feel any better, I voted for you. But cheer up, now you have more time for your bookkeeping. Mafal doesn't say a word, turns around and walks out of the tavern. Near the exit, he turns around and looks at Tirist. Don't come to me for help. You'll, you'll find out how hard it is. And he slams the door closed behind him. One of the first things Tyrus does as the new mayor is order a new bedroom and office for him to be dug. It'll be next to my fall and Cezure's offices. I need a few statues in there and while we're at it I need an armor stand and a weapon rack as well. The dwarves get to work immediately. And get these walls engraved. Some of the worker dwarves think to themselves that Mafal has never ordered them around like that. Yeah, that's what you get when you vote for a military dwarf to be your leader. Let's take a look at who Tyrus really is. A recent quote of his is, I learned about striking and I am very satisfied. Yeah, he's still basically a rookie military dwarf, but he has potential. He was eager to be elected. He is a worshipper of Alas Beach Streams. Yeah, that's, that's the god dedicated to order and law that I mentioned earlier. He'll want a temple dedicated to Alas very soon, I think. He is the mayor of Merchant Slipped and joined us on the 19th of Slate in the year 101. He is 72 years old, which well isn't very old for a dwarf. He is a muscular dwarf. He is basically unbreakable and very strong. Well, that's nice. He, uh, he absolutely detests snails. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> He's, uh, he's pretty patient, but has bad analytical abilities. He has a great deal of respect for law and values loyalty and friendship. He loves war and feels introspection is a waste of time. He has a profound sense of duty and obligation. Hmm, okay, well he sounds like an interesting dwarf. A real military dwarf. He's going to take Merchant Slipped into a new direction for sure. Law and order, and probably a sizable military. 
Okay, well, I, I was hoping that the dwarf would elect to keep my fall around a little longer, but it was not to be. We'll see how he, uh, he does leading the fortress. Alright, it's time to get back to the fortress. One of the first things that happens is that elves are coming to trade. Great, let's, let's see what they have to offer us. Sazir goes out to meet the traders. Hey guys, good news, we, uh, we haven't been cutting down any more trees. Ah yes, <laughs> that's good. One day you dwarves will learn about the wonders of nature as well. We have some great items for trade, so have a look. Sazir looks at the items and quickly sees a cage with a grizzly bear in it. Hmm, that would look great in our tavern. It can entertain the guests. So, uh, well, we'll offer up a bunch of mugs for the grizzly bear and some food. That should be a fair trade. But the elves just look at her and laugh. Oh, oh, oh no, you'll have to offer up some better items if you want all of that. Ah, damn elves. Sazir thinks. Alright, we'll, we'll leave the food, we'll just take the grizzly bear. Gah! Leave it to a besotted dollar to miss the finer points of discourse. I'm leaving. Do reflect. And before Sazir can even make another offer, the elves start packing up. <sighs> well, suit yourself, you dumb tree huggers. We didn't want your stupid bear anyway. Next, a group of visitors seek out tourists. It's a pretty varied group of creatures. Uh, it's a goblin, a human, a few elves and a few visiting dwarf and poets. The decisive snarls want to reside in our fortress for the purpose of entertaining citizens and visitors. Now, Tyrus isn't one for poets or elves, but he has seen the work my has put into the Belbus berries and doesn't want to be known as a leader that is no fun. So he lets them in. Yeah, welcome to Merchant Slipped. And with that it's probably not a bad idea to expand the Bulbous Berries once more. We need more room for dancing and drinking. Now that the dwarves have worked on some engravings and the new office for tourists, I think it's time to have a look at how those statues and engravings look. Here's an engraving of a founding of Merchant Slipped in the year 100. In my false room there's an engraving of Sazir, surrounded by a bunch of dwarves. It relates to the appointment of Sazir as the broker of our group. And in Tyrus's new office there are four statues, but this one catches my eye. It's a cinnabar statue of... <laughs> Mafal. It's made by Logum and it relates to the selection of Mafal as leader to our group. <laughs> well, I find it hilarious that Logum thought it was a good idea to make that statue and put it in Tyrus's room. <laughs> I wonder what Tyrus will think every time he sees it. I'm starting to like our dwarves more and more. As we've been looking around, once again one of our dwarves is hit by a strange mood. Doran, the dwarf, begins talking gibberish and claims the craft dwarf's workshop. Let's see what kind of artifact he'll make. And there we go! Alright, it's a crown. It's a rhyolite crown. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with rectangular rhyolite cabochons and tabled with baguette cut amethyst. Hmm, this object menaces with spikes of goat leather. Maybe something for a new mayor to wear? Uh, we'll see. Uh, good work, Doran. Tyrist has given our defensive positioning some thought, and it's pretty clear we're very vulnerable at the moment. So we'll build an extra outer wall around our outer structure. He won't roof up the entire thing, but he might make towers up there for crossbow dwarves in the future. Now, while our dwarves are busy working on that, Let's get back to our magma project. Oh, another interruption. Oh, my goodness, that's good. We can use some more hands. Let's see how many are coming. 16 new dwarves join us. Good stuff. Plenty of work to do, so come on in. Probably a couple of strong dwarves in there, so we'll start expanding our military. Now, let's see. We'll add 5 more dwarves to our first squad, and we'll install a second barracks for a second squad. Theorist still thinks our situation is very dangerous at the moment, with, uh, with only 5 unarmored actual military dwarfs, so beside the work that is being done on getting our metal industry ready, he wants extra hands in the military as well. Here we can see our dwarfs working on the barracks. We'll add a weapon rack and an armor stand, and we'll get a new squad going. The Silvery Stasis. Eh, alright. We'll put 10 dwarfs in there as well. Start training dwarfs.
After some more work is done, I think it's time to actually tap into the volcano. We have the floodgates in place, uh, the reservoirs are done, so let's finally do this. The dwarves know a little trick to make sure we can safely tap into the volcano. We'll mine open the last piece of rock wall separating the volcano from the magma channel. And there we go. The magma is flowing into our channel. Nice. Next, all we have to do is pull the levers for these floodgates and we'll let the magma into our first reservoir. We'll lock the basalt magma safe door leading into the reservoir tightly so that there won't be a dwarf entering the reservoir when it's filled with magma. And next we'll pull the levers. And there we go. Magma flowing into our reservoir. All we have to do now is pull the next lever to open the second floodgate to our next reservoir. There. The magma is flowing nicely. Now we just have to keep an eye on the level of the stuff so that we can close the floodgate as soon as we have enough of it. Uh oh. What's this? A vile force of darkness arrives. Oh no. We're under siege. At least seven goblins are here to attack our fortress. Oh dear. Okay, okay, let's see if our defensive walls work. Because I don't think we can actually fight these goblins off right now. They are armed and dangerous and our dwarves are not ready for a full blown attack. Okay, I've ordered the dwarves to pull the levers. The sieges are well, very close to the entrance though, so I hope our dwarves are quick enough uh, pulling the levers. Now let's keep an eye on the entry. The goblins are attacking our grazing animals. Ooh, yeah, it's a real shame, but there's not something we can really do about it at the moment. They are firing at one of our cats. Uh, I don't think it got out in time. Come on, Bridge, close! There, the bridge is closed. One of the goblins made it inside, though. Ah, uh, well, first let's take a look at the damage. Yeah, one of our cats has been killed by the goblins. And they are killing our livestock outside. Looking around, we can see one of our cat's paws laying here. And the cat itself fell down the stairs and is resting a floor lower. Aww, poor thing. Luckily, our squads are both training here near the entrance, so they can respond to our threat quickly. Okay, military dwarves. Both squads will be sent in to deal with the goblin that breached our fortress. Let's see how this goes. Our brand new mayor is training at the moment as well, so he'll go into the fight as well. Let's see if he proves his worth in the military. I'm bossing the game. Here our dwarves come. The goblin is actually charging them. 20 dwarves versus 1 goblin. This should be easy. Right? Ooh, blood is spraying around and the goblin got some good hits in. Oh dear, this is not looking great. Well, they've got him down at least. He collapses under the barrage of, of 20 dwarves punching it. There are quite a few wounds though. Oh dear, one of our injured dwarves is our new mayor. Eh, he's cut his right arm open. Well, I hope it's not permanently damaged. Kol and Kivish have been hurt as well. Well, off to the hospital. Let's hope we can get you fixed up. Tosit, Basin Kol is the dwarf who eventually killed the goblin. Well, good job, Tosit. Looking at the report, he used his fist to eventually kill the goblin. He bashed his head in with his right hand until an artery has been opened. Whew, gruesome. But well, I'm proud of you, Tosit. Now, the goblins will kill all our livestock outside, but they shouldn't be able to get into our fortress, so we can take a moment to regroup. What? Ah, oh, you've got to be kidding me. The March Titan Yequi has come. A huge one-eyed tarantula. <laughs> it has large mandibles and it moves about carelessly. Its lavender exoskeleton is waxy. Beware its... Poisonous bite. Really? Oh well, I guess we won't be going outside for a while. This on top of the sieging goblins is way more than we're equipped to deal with. 
maybe the Titan will attack the goblins and that way we'll have one less problem to deal with, but I won't count on it. Meanwhile, our injured dwarfs are in the hospital and there's some more bad news. Tyrus probably won't recover from his wound in his arm. He suffered nerve damage and he probably won't be able to use his right arm anymore. <sighs> well, that's just great. He hasn't been mayor for more than a few weeks and he's already been mangled. And though I hate to do this to you guys, it is time to finish up this episode. I didn't mean for it to end on a cliffhanger, but it seems that's going to be the case regardless. We haven't really achieved our goal of metal production quite yet, but everything is in place for that. We have magma inside the fortress and all we have to do is build our smelters. Our new leader has also made sure to build an outside wall, which has been completed. Sadly, a goblin siege came in before we could really use the walls and now a titan joined the siege outside. I hope the siegers and the titan will fight with each other, but I'm not quite sure if that will happen. I'll have to see next episode. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this episode. I've been at it for a few episodes now, so I'd love to hear what you guys think I could do better. I hope you'll join us next episode. Bye bye.